Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the NFX Life Sciences Corporation AVXL Phase 2, Phase 3 Results Update, and today is the 18th of September, 2023. In this update, we're going to be pretty much looking at the data that NFX just released. We're going to be looking at the bullish and the bearish parts of that data and kind of going through it. So I generally follow Small Cap Pharma. I do games, so if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, and thank you. Uh, disclaimer is I do own shares in NFX. I'm an amateur investor and any advice given should be followed up by our own due diligence and any information given is valid for today, the 18th of September. And this specific slideshow will not be updated, but as we get more information, we'll update it. So, summary of the results. So, it's still confusing. Let's go with that first. So, the company has said the trial is positive. There's a lot of missing data and confusing analysis that is ongoing. Now, taking into the full picture, it seems like that NFX is trying to build a case for a successful trial, and as the company attends to use all the data points to help clear up any inconsistencies with the data. We're going to go into that a little bit more. What I have posted here is the ADS COG and the CDR uh, SB. That's pretty much information that we have from NFX compared to uh, Biogen and a size drug. And as you can see, it is either slightly better or about the same at a shorter time period. And then the p-values we are going to talk about in the next slide. So this is the first point. So this, okay, so in quotes, uh, the trial is successful in meeting the co-primary endpoints if the significant of each endpoint is p less than 0 0.05. So let's talk about that first. That is pretty much the golden standard of if trials pass or fail. You hit that p-value, you're great. Or if the significance of one of the co-primary endpoints is P0 point, is less than 0 0.025, if one of the primary endpoints is at that level of that, then the secondary endpoint should be evaluated at the same level. Wow. Okay, so this is confusing as hell. As most companies really just use the uh, 0 0.05 level as proof the trial is successful, Anavex is using that lower p-value since the data did not hit that mark. Does that mean the trial failed? Not necessarily, but they're stating since all the values hit the lower statistical significant analysis, that proves the drug. So the first uh, endpoint didn't quite make that 0 0.05, but they all were in that lower level. So it definitely makes this extremely cloudy, makes it slightly complicated, and we are just going to go with that. There are also larger issues in that. So there's no ADCS, ADL data. This was a primary endpoint. And so missing this endpoint really brings up the largest issue since now the data is nine plus months old. We should have it. We 100% should have this data. It should be reported. Uh, this point alone could make you think that they're hiding something. Like we, we definitely assume that the data did not hit that P mark. Most likely it hit the lower mark. But again, this is data that we should have, and this is not something I even should be talking about. Uh, we have no pool data yet. So was, uh, was the 30 milligram or the 50 milligram the same or different? Did one pass? Did one fail? Uh, again, nothing. And then, of course, after nine months, this is all they have to update. And that is a large issue because at this point, we should have, we should have all the data. Uh, you know, at this point, we should have all the data. And it's very frustrating. Now. That's the pretty much the negative part. Let's look at what is positive. So looking at the current data as a whole, uh, it does prove that something is going on and based on the low, and I mean super low bar for accelerated approval, they should be able to get it. Uh, when talking about it, like I said, if everything is hitting that lower mark, that kind of tells you that it is passing. If only one thing hit the lower mark and nothing else did, then you're, you got to fail trial. Uh, I, Atacatamab uh, got accelerated approval on two failed phase three trials, and Lacatamab got, <laughs> got approval on a failed phase two trial. So both these companies just, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's a low, low bar. Biomarkers, biomarkers, biomarkers. So used for both Atacatamab and Lacatamab. Again, this points to ability to get accelerated approval. The biomarkers seem to indicate there is an issue. And again, we have enough data that met a slight statistical significance that it looks like something is going on. Safety, there's really no major issues. Most issues were mild to moderate. Dizziness was, I think, the worst one. And in comparison to brain bleeds and dying, I don't think this is really an issue. The company currently has an extension study that is currently happening. That is the attention AD study. Um, 
this probably can also be used for information if needed. But again, we don't have that information. So the summary. So it's been nine months and this is what we have. And it would seem like they have not met with the FDA, have not met, finished the trial data. And all of that is very concerning. So in reality, we're really not in a different position before, you know, before the data or after the data. We're still just waiting on all the information. And at this point, I don't plan to sell any shares and I definitely don't plan to buy any shares. The company does not seem to want to share all the data. And that really makes it look like they're hiding something. And you can't help it. Like they're not sharing the data. There is not anybody on the bullish side who can say everything's great. You just can't. So we're kind of stuck in this. But uh, like I said, the stock is going to continue to frustrate everyone until we have that information. And there's not much we can do about it. We're just going to have to wait and hope that we get rewarded with the data at some point. But again, I think I'm in the same boat with a lot of people. I think we're just frustrated at this point. And it's so, um, like I said, I hope this helped clear up some of, the, uh, some of what's going on, though it really doesn't seem like it has. But at least you have all the information available to make smart investing decisions or smart gambling decisions, either or. So thank you very much for listening and uh, watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.